Hey, how's it going? It's Pat from Handcraft Restoration again. Here to do another video to teach the everyday average homeowner how to do a little bit of tuck pointing themselves. I've been having some haters comment on some of my videos, uh, specifically grout bag videos saying, oh, this isn't tuck pointing and blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna show you what tuck pointing is and what the difference in speed, technique, and all that is. So uh, a few things we're gonna need I've got my mortar mixed up. I've laid this window sill. It uh, it was a large window and they wanted to make it smaller, so I, I came in and laid this up. I always like to dig the mortar back on projects like this when I lay them because, for one, I was directly in the sun all day and it's about 90 degrees outside. And these brick are such dry nature that it's just sucking the water right out of the mortar. And so it's just a pain in the butt to kind of joint that as you're going you know when you're in direct sunlight and stuff like that so um, this way I can kind of wet it all down and just specifically focus on tuck pointing and getting this thing looking good and uniformed so I guess I'll explain by let you know what a tuck pointer is tuck pointers are a wooden handle offset they come in different widths these are just a couple of the sizes that I'm needing on this job um, you want to make sure that you pick the right size tuck pointer for the right size joint so a lot of times when I'm out tuck pointing I'll have three four sometimes maybe even five of these things laying around and so first we're going to start by making sure all the dust and everything's cleaned out of the joints which I already did um, and then we're going to want to wet it down you don't want to have this thing pooling dripping water on it so you might want to wet it down and then like maybe go mix your mortar up get your tools up stuff like that because the wet faces of the bricks going to cause a lot of smearing which isn't a huge deal but you're just creating a lot more work for yourself in the long run uh, have to scrub put a whole lot of elbow grease in there to to get it clean in a couple days from now when we come back to acid wash this so a lot of people they'll use something called a hawk board it's just a big square board with a handle on the bottom of it. I hate those things. They hurt my wrist. They make my hands cramp up. Plus, it holds a lot of mud, which is good when you're doing a lot of production. But something small and tedious like this, we don't need something like that. So, you know, I'll use uh, something maybe as small as a duckbill trowel, which that's for really small tuck pointing jobs. And what I really like to use is a concrete finishing trowel. It's easy to hold. I can just put my hand under there, put a little bit of mortar on the board, and then, you know, kind of hold the thing up and start tuck pointing. So, uh, this particular job, it's uh, it's called a grapevine joint. Um, as you can see, it's got, a, it's got a line that runs down it. And so, you know, the magic words in restoration is match existing. So I have my... Uh, grapevine joiner here at the tuck point this thing's just uh, it's got two different ends um, and it basically just kind of scores a line down the middle these are always good to use on like uh, if you're doing a new home if you choose a brick that's rough and not like perfectly squared up and it's kind of wavy and stuff these are really good to use because it kind of hides the fact that that those brick are so crooked and stuff so I'm just going to kind of hop to it and explain what I'm doing as I'm going along. I like to use a pump sprayer, pump it up, make sure it's not pouring out of there. So I'm just going to go through and kind of wet my joints down. I want to make sure that it gets in the joints. When I cut these things back yesterday, I made sure that it was about three quarters of an inch. That's a good number for uh, when you go to tuck point. Some people say that you have to do this in lifts, and I don't really agree with that. And a lift is, you know, putting in one layer, letting it set for a while, come back, putting in another layer, letting that set for a while, and then come back and putting in another layer. So it would be three one quarter inch lifts, which basically means you have to do the same job three times. So I just find that like completely unnecessary. Somebody who went to college and had a bright idea came up with that one but I get the theory behind it just not really for me so you want to make sure like I said your 
your walls not uh, sopping wet. You just want some moisture in there to the, the old mortar in here so that our new mortar can bond to it a little bit better. So what I do is I'll get just a little bit of mortar. I'm gonna kind of do this slow so that everybody can uh, kind of see what I'm doing at first. So I'm gonna put my mortar on there. Start out with a small amount because it's uh, while you're learning and getting your technique down, you don't want to have like big gobs of mud getting on your brick and stuff like that. So, so I'm gonna take a joiner. I always want to pick one that is going to be just smaller than the joint. Now you can use smaller ones on big joints like this, but um, you definitely don't want one where like this big one here where it's going to smear on the edges of the brick just create more work for yourself and it's just completely uh, just a bad idea so when I get my mortar on there I kind of I call it I kind of building a ramp I want to like smooth it down like this and so there's a motion to tuck pointing so it's easy to put the board on the wall and kind of tuck point smash it in there well when it comes time to put the uh, mortar and the head joints, which are the vertical ones, um, people like to try to hold their their hawk board or trial or whatever you're using like this and smash it in. That's just a way to create a huge mess. Um, so there's a motion I'm going to try to show you. Um, so like I said, you want to build your your ramp like this, and then you want to take just about as much as you need. You don't want to go grabbing no big amount because it's just going to fall off the end. So. You'll constantly see me kind of ramping my mortar down like that and there's a motion it's kind of a flip of both wrists at the same time so I'm gonna so I'm gonna get just the as much mud as I need on the tip and I'm gonna as I'm swiping with the tuck pointer in my right hand I'm gonna pick up with the other one and then it's gonna stay on there like that it's kind of like a game of balance I promise when you start first when you first start to do this you're gonna go like that and it's just gonna constantly be falling off so it takes a, little, a lot of practice. I've been doing this a really long time. So, you know, like, again, this is a little bit richer uh, because of uh, the type of sand I chose to use to match this joint. Um, you know, if it's, if it's a fine sand you're gonna have where you can't see much of the aggregate or the sand granules in the mortar. So this is kind of like a medium grit sand. And so it doesn't like to stick as much as, you know, something that would be fine sand would like to. So uh, I usually start out with my bed joints. Actually, I always start out with my bed joints. Another thing is with the ramp, I like to use it on this edge too because you don't want to get your mortar all gobbed up up against the brick here. So you just kind of want to take a little bit at the time. You don't want to put whatever you're using to hold the mortar inside the joint you just kind of want to put it right on the edge like this and then you're just going to take a little bit at a time and just kind of smash it in there you always want to go if you're right-handed you want to go from right to left um, if you're left-handed it's probably easier to do it the other way and so when it when you're smashing it in there make sure that you uh, when you go to move your your trowel that you use your tuck pointer to kind of hold that mortar in there as you slide your trowel over. That way you don't pull it right out because it will do that. Um, you know, this, you can do this really fast. Um, I suggest trying to take your time. Uh, do it slow. Try to keep the mess down to a minimum. Um, I'll do a couple of these and just kind of show you what, how to do the head joints. And then, when I'm done with this, I'm going to get my grout bag out, because I love them. I don't care what people say, I can get this done literally about four or five times faster with a grout bag than you can with a tuck pointer. And I'm a fast tuck pointer usually, so as you can see, I'm, I'm not uh, taking the mortar and smearing it up on the edges of the brick. You want to keep doing that for sure. You can put as much mortar on the uh, on your board as you want to. It's just easier to start with a smaller amount so you get the technique down. Some people say that your hawk board or trowel should never touch the wall. 
I don't agree with that either. It's just you have to figure out the technique of, of how to uh, keep from making that huge mess because that's the biggest complaint with that. You want to make sure that you're pushing your mud all the way back because when it comes time to join it out later, we don't want any big voids back there. We want it to just jam packed full. It kind of looks, it's not messy, it kind of looks like it is, but I always want to leave more mortar in the joint than I need. It's called leaving it proud. That way I'll have a little bit of excess mortar to play with later on when it comes time to join it out. And I always talk highly about using acids when you're done with this. There's an acid called Vanitrol. You can usually find it at like a supply yard or somewhere like that that like sells brick or concrete or anything like that. I got a few of them around my neighborhood, so I got access to all that stuff. It's just a light acid that will foam up when it hits mortar. So when you start to get your mortar stains around um, in three days from now, I'll come back with a uh, like a scrub brush, a deck scrubber or something like that. Put uh, four parts water, one part acid if it's not very messy. Um, and you'll see as soon as the acid hits the wall, it starts fizzing up and it literally eats, it pretty much burns the finish right off of the brick, so. Or that uh, smearing mortar right off the brick, I'm sorry. So I've kind of got this, these bed joints about where I want them. I'm going to drop back here in a second show you how to do the head joints. They're a lot more trickier. Kind of helps the whatever you're using when you get your mud on there. Just kind of like bang it, hit it on something, get it to, to stick to your, your trial, whatever you're using. Another thing you can do is sometimes the mud likes to build up on this bottom edge here. I usually take my finger and just swipe that clean because I'm going to balance that the edge of that that uh, trowel right on the edge of that brick. It's almost inside it, but not quite. If you put it inside the joint, it's a lot easier to when you go put the mud mud in and then move your hawk board or trowel. Uh, just to pull it right out of the wall and it's just super frustrating You don't really want to take Your entire tuck pointer the entire length of your tuck pointer and get all the mud on there and, and smash it all in at once like you know, people who are experienced at this and they're doing like production tuck pointing where they have to get hundreds of uh, feet tuck pointed a day they will do that but they have a lot of experience with doing that and most of them if you're good you're going to be able to keep it pretty clean um, another thing is you want to make sure you go in order it doesn't really matter what order top the, or bottom the top top the bottom whatever you decide uh, because this stuff's going to be setting up on us, getting hard to the point to where we need to go ahead and hit it with our joiners and stuff. And if we do a little bit here, a little bit there, some over here, all sporadic like that, it's going to we're going to lose track of what's setting up and what's not. Some people instinctually kind of go to scrape all that mortar off there with their trial, which I'm usually pretty bad about, but. Like I said earlier, it's a lot better to, to keep this thing proud to where there's more mud than you need on there. And I'll show you why in a minute. So you can see it's not very hard. I make it look easier than it is, but usually people get this a lot quicker than they will say like, uh, you know, doing caulk work or something where you need a lot more, use a lot more of the mechanics of your tool. 
I've seen people pick this up pretty quick, but caulking, like not so much. Some people just never get it. Uh, so again, with going in order, you know, I'm gonna do this whole section here, all the bed joints, and then I'll drop back and do all my head joints starting from right to left as well. And that way, hopefully this, this all sets up. Uh, you know, in like the order that I put it in. But if you don't wet your wall down and get some moisture into this brick, it's gonna suck the water right out of them. It's gonna, the spots where you didn't spray are gonna be like super dry and you might lose them, meaning that they got too hard, too quick to do anything with. So I'm gonna get rid of this trial for a second. I'll show you, this is just, what I have near me at the moment, my duck bill. It's the same concept. I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the head joint. So you wanna get your mud on there. You don't want that much. I mean, that's just, too, it makes it unmanageable. When I get mine on there, I usually swipe the edge, the edge, the face. You kinda of wanna tap it. The same thing with the little ramp idea. Again, go ahead and go to push your mud off there. And as you do, you kinda of wanna uh, tilt that trial up as you're tilting your tuck pointer up and balance it. I mean, it will stay on there if it's sticky enough, but um, that's going to take a lot of practice, I promise. Same thing with the head joints. You want to make sure they're full. You only want to put the mortar on, you know, the tip of the tuck pointer because you don't need it anywhere else. Just a way to make another huge mess. When I do it, I obviously can get it to stick on there just fine. So I put almost as much as I need for the joint. These are a little bigger uh, head joints than I, than I like. Usually it's supposed to be about 3 8 but the way that whoever built this house bonded this thing out, um, they could have done it a little differently because these head joints are huge. That's a whole nother video on how to explain that one. Again, make sure we're pushing that all the way back in there. And you want to leave a little bit extra. Again, I'm going to repeat myself a lot, but because people really just learn best by uh, repetition, in my experience. go to push this in you got too much it's going to roll out over the edges on each side like this so I usually just take my tuck pointer and scoot that back into the joint and kind of get that you know away from the face of that brick see I just had some fall off there make sure you're not smearing the brick above and below the head joints kind of get just a manageable manageable amount on the tip of that tuck pointer I don't have it near me at the moment but I always have uh, multiple tuck pointers like I'll usually have two to maybe three of the same size tuck pointers but I'll take a, a grinder with a metal cutting wheel and I'll cut them down a little bit because more often than not you're not going to be using the entire length of this tuck pointer to go and smash your mortar in there because it's just it's just it's just harder and it makes a bigger mess so I'm using usually only about this much of my tuck pointer so um, when I shorten them down a little bit it gives me a lot more control and agility in order to be a little bit more precise with where I'm getting the mortar at and stuff like that plus these things are made of thin metal so they so they bend and flex on you that sign just cracked me in the head I own a company called Handcraft Restoration. I started about two years ago. I developed it on the sidelines of my son's soccer practice and games. Um, really good at what I do. I've been doing it for 26 years. And uh, I thought maybe it was time to go on out and give it a shot on my own. 
I still work full time for a company in the day, which they're trying to make me a foreman here, but it's not working out real well. I got to be on uh, a pretty cool project. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, and we have a bridge down there built by uh, John Roebling, same guy who built the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. Um, this thing was built in 1865, finished in like 67, I believe. And uh, we're down there doing um, stone replacement, which are Dutchmen is what they're called. And we're also uh, doing stone patching. Like a lot of people don't even realize that that's a thing, but, and a lot of the work that I specialize in, historical masonry, uh, I do a lot of that. So just let it be known that that's a thing and people you know, they can have the stonework around their house, like fixed, if it's limestone, sandstone. You can do the same thing with concrete, and just the list just goes on and on. So as you can see, I got it all in there now. Normally what I like to do is uh, take the next size tough pointer up, which uh, it's not a huge difference, but it's enough to that where I can go and just kind of like finish those off. It's starting to set up here even though I wet it down pretty quick um, a lot of times in historic work uh, your mortar joints are real rough just from just from years of weather and just the age um, so people will take like a uh, a wooden dowel or something like this you know cut a broom handle down or a lot of guys use the ends of, of their tuck pointer to do it and it'll just kind of join it with that and it gives it that that rough texture and appearance um, and then when you come back with your acid it'll it'll expose the uh, the sand granules in in your mortar joints and make it not look so creamy and that's another good way to match historical stuff as well I do that almost every single job unless the historical society that I'm working for doesn't allow it like on the bridge right now, it's, it goes over the Ohio River. We're not allowed using any kind of chemicals or anything like that because of uh, the chance that they can get into the water. The river's pretty nasty. There's a lot worse things in there than a little bit of chemicals. All right, so this stuff's setting up pretty good. One thing, you probably won't be using these grapevine joiners, but um, they're a little more tedious to use and um, it just takes a lot more control. Most of the time, like I said, you'll use a stick or a, uh, a barrel joiner or a spoon joiner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take it and just kind of run it down and create that line. I'll go through here real quick. Um, the idea behind this is just kind of make it look like a grapevine to where it's, uh, has that line right down the center there. It's a little bit more difficult to use these unless you're doing new work and you just run and just join it out real quick. But I have to match what's on this house. I got pretty lucky and found a really good mortar match. It doesn't look like it now, but mortar dries uh, a lot lighter than it is when it's wet. So I did a little sample panel to my right over here yesterday typically I would uh, do the sample let it set for a couple days um, come back acid wash it let it dry for a day or two and then that would end up being the color that you know the customer can choose but uh, it's kind of on a time crunch on this one so with this you can use what's called called the butt of it and uh, just make sure this thing's clean they like to rust up on you you can take like a wire brush or anything piece of sandpaper jamming it in and out of a bucket of sand anything you can to do to keep that clean because if not it's going to want to uh, drag the mortar out when you're running your joiner down it you're just kind of going to cruise down the line here in my experience it's it's a little harder to uh use a joiner like this because you really just have to try to focus on matching what's on the wall and so this one I had to kind of customize because 
the line in the center of it on this one was way too thick. So I had to take a, a grinder with a metal blade and like trim that down a little bit. So I had the, the right size line. This is kind of going to look a little weird until we come back and play with it in a little while. Um, it's kind of a process with these. You see how when I drag my line down, I'm going to drag it right into the line of the old mortar. Try to make that match up as much as possible. Don't worry about all this excess on there. We're going to scrape that off in a little while. And then we'll have to run the joiner uh, back over it again a couple times probably. So that's basically it. And so I'm going to let this set for a while. And I'm going to come back, probably take, uh, you know, my duck bill or something and, and scrape some of this, this excess off. Um, it's going to kind of fill in the little holes around it, uh, that you, the little line that you created. But that's why I will run back over this again. Usually I'll, uh, I'll let this set up a little bit because these edges of the mortar that are going to end up coming off, when they get uh, hard enough, uh, the chances of it smearing on the brick um, are lessened pretty dramatically. So that's basically it. That's Tuck Pointing 101. To all you haters out there that are dissing me for calling, uh, using a grout bag Tuck Pointing, well, there you go. Now you can Tuck Point. Peace.